Whenever people bring up sexism in anime, they go for easy targets like Naruto, Fairy Tail, and Hero Academia, but everyone seems to ignore Hunter x Hunter. But maybe Hunter x Hunter isn't as popular, you say? At the time of writing this, it has the number 7 spot of the highest rated anime on Mal. That's top 10. People are ignoring the blatant sexism and misogyny misogyny, so I'm gonna expose it. In most battle manga, the main group has a couple of women, usually holding one of the mainest roles. Nami is the third mainest character in One Piece, Sakura is third in Naruto, Ruki is second in Bleach, Lucy is second in Fairy Tail, Ochako is fourth or fifth in MHA, Noel is second or third in Black Clover, Nezuko is second in Demon Slayer, Nobara is third or fourth in JJK, but in Hunter x Hunter, that isn't the case. The main group has four members and all of them are males. In fact, there are barely any females in this story period. The gender ratio is probably 9 to 1, which is a result of the patriarchy. Furthermore, the female hunters that barely exist are always inferior to their male counterparts. I'll go through the arcs and point out all the issues. The main elements of sexism are females being in non-fighting roles, the lack of female hunters, the inferiority of females compared to males, the lack of character development, the sexist powers, and the sexualized designs. Join me in the war against patriarchy. Let's we'll start with the chauvinist exam arc. One of the first women we're introduced to is Mito, the foster mother of Gon. Can she fight? No. Instead, she's relegated to the role of mother, and she is only defined by her connection to a male character. When we get to the actual exam, there is a crippling lack of female hunters. Ponzu is the only notable one, and she's incredibly weak. She had to rely on poison gas and bees. What's worse is that she was an antagonist rather than an ally. The first woman hunter has to be a stepping stone to be dominated by the chauvinistic male hunters. Her fighting style and future abilities are also associated with bees. Women and bees are often paired together, so just like women and bunnies, this is sexist. If you look at her character design, her clothes hug her hourglass figure, which promotes harmful body standards to women. Look at her, where are her organs? And then in the Chimera Ant arc, she's fridged brutally, a trope stereotypically associated with women. She's thrown away like an object that has been used up. Does she even have a character arc or development of any kind? No. In the Hunter exam, one of the faces was centered around cooking. You know who was leading it? A woman, Menchi. Because cooking is for women. How unbelievably sexist. She doesn't do anything else in the story except host this cooking phase. No development whatsoever, and her outfit is highly sexualized and objectifying. Later in the exam, another woman is used as an opponent, LaRue. As soon as she reveals she's a woman, she's immediately sexualized by Leorio when she allows him to check her body to see if she's a man or woman. Utterly ridiculous. She has no development, and she doesn't do anything else in the story after the rock, paper, scissors. In the final stage of the exam, which is focused on physical combat, there are no women. I repeat, no women. Nine participants and not a woman in sight. It's almost as if the author is saying that women aren't cut out for combat. At least Naruto's tournament had Tamari in the final stages. At least Hiro had Ochako participate in the tournament stage. The Zoldic arc doesn't have much going on, but a prominent woman is Canary, who is reserved to the role of servant for the patriarchal family that is the Zoldics. Typical. She beats up Gon, but only because Gon lets her. Once again, the woman is weak. Her entire character is also connected to Kilua, a male. She doesn't exist independent of men. Canary's design also unrealistically hugs her hourglass, organless figure. In the misogynist arena, there are once again no female combatants. Every single combatant is male. Once again, Togashi is saying that women can't fight. The only prominent woman in this arc is Koko, an announcer, which is a job that has had a sexist history. But of course Togashi doesn't care. He prefers when women support and serve men rather than having lives of their own. Actually, there is one female hunter, but she doesn't fight. She only heals a male fighter. I'm talking about Machi. Just like the acclaimed and highly reputable writer Yukari Fujimoto said about battle manga, men fight, women heal. And you know what's worse? Her ability is based on sewing, which is a housewife stereotype. Her outfit is also extremely tight and unrealistically hourglass-like. She even shows off her legs for the male gaze. Does she get any character development in the future? No. The York New Arc doesn't get any better. The first prominent woman is Melody. Her personality is being kind, which is a stereotypically female trait. Her goal is to return to her original appearance because beauty is all that can matter for a woman. What is her ability? She plays a flute, a feminine instrument, and can heal people physically and emotionally. Once again, a woman who heals. The other woman on the team is Base. Her design is the first thing that sticks out. She's covered in makeup and dressed in highly sexualized clothes that are both tight and revealing. What is her personality? A sadistic dominatrix. Unbelievably sexist. But it gets worse. Her ability revolves around controlling men that she kisses. How many sexist abilities is that so far? Four? Okay, four. Her entire character revolves around sex. She has no character development and is fridged by a fellow female. What happened to female solidarity? Can any of these female bodyguards fight in close combat? No, because Togashi believes that women are weak. At least One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, and Fairy Tail had women that could fight in close range. Furthermore, the only two women of the bodyguards are arguably the weakest in the group. And then there's the females of the Phantom Troop. I already mentioned Machi. Next is Shizuku. 
Tight sexualized clothes? Check. Unrealistic hourglass figure? Check. She also has glasses to fulfill the desires of men who are into that. And her ability? Oh boy. She summons a vacuum. I don't know how much more on the nose you could get. Maybe an ability revolved around pregnancy? I mean, come on. Furthermore, the vacuum has a mouth that sucks in things. Togashi is trying to say that women should only be on their knees giving giving the double-handed Gok Gok 5000. She has no character development. Finally, there's Pakunoda. Misogynistic makeup? Check. Tight clothes? Check. Showing skin? Check. Her ability is about reading memories, which is a sly way of saying that women are more empathetic and understanding. Her ability also uses a gun, but has to be the most feminine gun that was commonly used by women in sexist western stories of old. She has no character development, and guess what? She's one of the first troop members to die. Fridging happens once again due to the patriarchy. The troop had 15 members, yet only 3 were female. That's a fifth, and that's sexist. Furthermore, if you were to rank the troop members in terms of power, the woman would be at the bottom, which is once again sexist. But it doesn't stop there. The worst character in this arc might be Neon. She's a girl with a powerful ability, and she's literally just an object to be used by other men. First her father, then Krollo. She has no development, desires, or anything. She's just an object. It's not looking good for sexist sexist. The prominent woman in Pig Island is Biscuit. Her name is already a red flag since she's named after a feminine snack. Is she an independent character? No. She's defined by her connection to Gon and Kiloa as their teacher. If you look at her design, she's wearing feminine clothes with feminine colors, which is so stereotypical and misogynistic. She has no character development and also obsesses over handsome men like Hisoka. Sexist. How about her abilities? She summons a servant, Cookie, who uses massages and lotions to heal people. Once again, men fight, women heal. Her entire ability revolves around summoning a woman's servant to heal men. Massaging? Seriously? That's another vocation that's typically associated with women. Maybe you think it's all fine because Bisky is powerful, but her power also promotes misogyny. The only reason she's strong is because her true form is that of a bulky woman with masculine features such as muscles, height, and a strong jawline. That's right, the only reason she's strong is because she looks like a man. Furthermore, she uses her power to hide her true appearance so that she can look young, slim, and cute in order to submit to patriarchal standards of beauty. Alright, the Chimera Ant arc is last. Will things get better for Chauvinist Chauvinist? No. The Chimera Ant Queen's entire purpose is to give birth. You heard me right. Her entire purpose is to give birth, and her powers revolve around that. Meanwhile, the Chimera King is the strongest character we've seen so far and goes around exerting dominance over his opponents. Palm is the only female hunter who takes part in the final mission in this arc. She's a mentally unstable character, which is a sneaky reference to how hysteria was a word used to wave away women in the past. One of her primary motivations is going on a date with Gon. Women are only allowed to be lovers. Her design in the date, and as a Chimera Ant, are highly sexualized. Her boobs are practically spilling out of her dress. Her ability revolves around hair because women only care about their appearance. Furthermore, she barely has any character development and barely does anything in the arc. While the men get cool solo fights, she just fights Kilua for a short amount of time. There's another character, Hina, whose Nen ability revolves around her getting pregnant. Togashi really outdid himself. Her character design is once again sexualized, tight clothes revealing an unrealistically slim figure. Zazan is another female Chimera who's defeated easily. Her design is highly sexualized. She's barely wearing anything and she only gets powerful when she abandons her feminine figure, kind of like Bisky. Look at her jokes when she meets Phaeton. She looks like a blow-up doll, objectifying. Finally, there's Komugi, who is only defined by her connection to Meruem. She can't fight at all. She's just the object of the king's affection, like a concubine. None of the women in this arc can even compare to the men in terms of strength. I think the evidence is very apparent. In conclusion, misogyny misogyny is extremely sexist due to the fact that there are barely any women, there are barely any female combatants, the girls are usually inferior to the boys, they never get any character development, they have sexualized designs, they are defined by their relationships to males, and they have stereotypically feminine powers. This is obviously the most sexist battle manga, but your internalized misogyny and bandwagon brain prevents you from acknowledging that, at least Naruto had Kaguya as a powerful female. Hunter doesn't have a single female character that would be in the top 10 of the universe. No one is safe. FMA is next.